spore. If this word doesn't mean much to you, then it's probably because you weren't alive back when I was a kid. So let me explain what it is and why it consumed a large chunk of my childhood. To put it simply, Spore was an ambitious game. The whole idea was to create a creature and control its evolution. From a single microscopic organism to a spacefaring species. What made the game really stand out though was its focus on user-generated content. In particular, Spore's creator tools gave players the creative freedom to design complicated structures and creatures for their worlds. Spore is a classic, and to this day, players still bring up its name whenever they see a new project in the works which resembles it in some way. Like everyone else, I hoped they would one day release a sequel. Unfortunately though, that won't be happening anytime soon. So, let's take matters into our own hands. This is how I made the Spore Creature Creator in Unity. The first step was to do some research. I needed to break everything down and figure out how it all fit together before I jumped into coding. In short, the creator is divided into three sections, building, painting, and testing. Building includes the ability to mold your creature's body and attach different body parts to it. The body itself should be manipulated using the spine, and parts should also be able to be manipulated individually. Body parts should also have different statistics that increase the creature's overall statistics when added. Next up, painting includes the ability to change the color and pattern of your creature's skin. This should affect the body, but also each individual part added. Finally, testing allows you to move your creature around test its different abilities, and change the background setting. We'll begin by implementing the building functionality. And it all starts with this. A capsule? While it doesn't look like much, this capsule is special. I didn't just right click and add it to the scene. You see, the crucial difference between this and a default Unity capsule is shown when you enable shaded wireframe mode. In order to mold the shape of the body, I needed to make sure this capsule had more geometry to work with. And by adjusting the settings, you can see how this is reflected on the mesh. For this to actually display though, we need to define two properties, its vertices and triangles. The vertices refer to all the points on the mesh, while the triangles specify how these points are connected to form the triangles that will be rendered. I won't go into too much detail on how this all works, but if you wanna learn more, I'd recommend watching this Bracky's tutorial. Now that I had a capsule, I needed to add the ability to mold it, starting with being able to change its length. I achieved this by simply repeating the code used to generate the central cylinder until it matched the number of bones. To then make it appear as if I was adding it to the back or front, all I needed to do was shift all the vertices in the opposite direction. Now it wouldn't be much fun if all you could make were horizontal poles, so let's fix that by giving it some bones. If you've ever imported a character into Unity, you may have noticed how a skinned mesh renderer component is used instead of a regular mesh renderer. These are special because the vertices on skinned meshes are now treated as skin, which wrap around the character's bones. Skin can also be manipulated using blend shapes, but we'll get to that in a bit. Of course, setting up bones isn't quite that simple. In order for them to work, we need to specify their bind poses and bone weights. Essentially, the bind poses are used to specify how bones are initially bound to a mesh. Through the use of bone weights, we can then specify how much every vertex is affected by each bone. Moving each bone individually, we can now see how the skin wraps around. However, we want them to move together. We can easily achieve this by setting them as children of one another, but this isn't the effect we're after. Rather, we want to keep them as siblings and instead use hinge joints to attach bones together. Using this also allows us to easily introduce limitations to each bone's angle of rotation. The next step was adding the ability to add or remove weight from the body. And this is where blend shapes come in. For this, we add frames to specify how the vertices should be displaced 
based on a parameter from 0 to 100. Firstly, a frame is added at 0, with an array filled entirely with 0 vectors, indicating no displacement. Next, we add another frame at 100 to specify how much the vertices should be displaced when the maximum amount of weight is applied to a bone. Now, when we drag the blend shape slider between 0 and 100, we can see how the vertices linearly interpolate between displacing the minimum and maximum amount. With the body now moldable, the next step was adding tools to be able to mold it. For this, I created drag, scroll, hover and click components, and then made the different tools using them. For example, the bones, stretch tool and body are all draggable, and so should all have a drag component attached to each. When you hover over the body, the bones should appear, and when you click it, it should be selected. You should also be able to scroll up or down on the bones to add or remove weight. Finally, I added a camera orbiting script, which can be dragged to rotate around the body and zoomed using the scroll wheel. Now that the body was complete, I could move on to adding the ability to attach parts. For this, I needed something to work with though, so I modeled a few parts in Blender. As you can see, I'm absolutely no artist, so that's where you guys come in. I've designed the system to use scriptable objects, which really easily allow new parts to be added to the creator. The transformation of body parts are handled in a similar way to how the weight of the body is set, using blend shapes. These can however be added when you create the model in a 3D modeling program, where all you need to do is name the blend shape to match the relevant transformation. Now that we had some really basic parts to work with, I added the functionality to drag them into the scene and onto the body. A key feature in Spore's editor is that parts are duplicated and flipped over the body. These flipped versions should behave in the exact same way as the original, and if they get too close to the center, they should merge into one. Once a part is dragged onto the body, it is then set as a child of the nearest bone to ensure that it moves along with it. Finally, I added a statistics menu that displays the information of each body part when you hover over it. The creature's overall statistics are then updated when you add or remove a part from the creature. With the building section now fully implemented, it was time to move on to painting, and I began by setting up the body to support textures. For this, the mesh needed to have a set of UVs defined, which essentially tell the renderer how 2D textures should be mapped onto the mesh. In our case, we have to figure out how to take an image and wrap it around a capsule. We can do this by looping through each ring, as well as every vertex on each ring, and map it to a coordinate on the texture. To prevent stretching, we can then multiply the height by the number of bones on the body. I then downloaded a couple of free, seamless, black and white geometric textures to use as patterns. Similar to the body parts, they can also be easily added to a patterns database and automatically updated to the list of available patterns. Now the significance of using black and white textures is because I wanted the colors to be changeable. The white of patterns should be replaced by the primary color, while the black should be replaced by the secondary color. I achieved this using a custom shader, which is exactly the same as the default shader. However, I added a single line of code to intercept the color before rendering it. This line sets the color of the surface as being a color between the secondary and primary color based on the grayscale or brightness of what the color was before. Lastly, I implemented the saving and loading functionality. For this, each creature should save their bones, attached body parts, pattern ID, and primary and secondary colors. I achieved this by creating a separate data class and saved it as a JSON using Unity's JSON utility. And by opening up the file, you can see this for yourself. Unfortunately, because of the limited amount of time I had due to university, I wasn't able to get around to adding transformable body parts or the testing section. But if it's requested enough, I'll definitely release an update. All things considered, I think this project was a success and I'm excited to see what creatures you all end up creating. The download link to the game and source code are both included in the description. While you're there, you should also consider joining the Discord server. 
I'll be hosting a challenge to submit your different body parts. And then after that, there will be a challenge to use all the parts submitted by the community and see who can design the best creature. But that's going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed or learned something, make sure to slap that like button and subscribe for more videos like this and to follow along on the development of my mobile game Nest. Anyway, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.